right, everybody, guys, welcome LinkedIn. Hope everybody's doing well out there. We'll let a few people jump on, uh, but welcome to our finance first series here in the month of April. April happens to be financial literacy month. And we wanted to come on for this entire month and really just give you guys some jewels, some nuggets, some gems, some things that you can do uh, to continue to uh, improve that financial education, financial literacy, especially for our youth. That's why it's so important. Again, guys, I'm, I'm Chris Muzan. You guys know me as co-founder of Financial of, of uh, United Agency. I'm your financial coach, financial planner, financial therapist, I like to call myself. Um, and I got some special guests on. I got my man, Derek, who's here, who's going to be with me the entire month. Yes, and sir. this was kind of our idea together to say, how can we get this financial education message out to people? How can we give parents and teachers and uh, educators more resources? And Derek has an amazing network of, of people that he, that he worked with and continues to work with. And that's why we said, well, you know what? Let's highlight some of those people. Let's get some of those people out there so that they can see and uh, be exposed to some of the great things that are happening. And so today we're on for our first show uh, with with uh, none other than Sam. And so, Derek, I'm going to pass it over to you. Give a quick intro and then we'll get into the show for today. All right. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, this is a great idea, man. Finance first. Um, super important. So I'm Derek Wesley. I'm the owner and founder of Seedling Financial Education. We work with schools, banks, and nonprofits to provide our innovative financial literacy tools. We have a mobile app that we provide. We have a full year-long curriculum for teachers. And I'm an educator myself at first. And so helping teachers and making sure that whenever it comes to financial literacy, I want to make sure that they have every single thing that they need because they already have enough on their plate. So we develop um, the PowerPoint slides, the um weeks at a glance, the whole year scope so that you can just plug and play and dive straight in with our financial literacy tools with quizzes, articles, um, games, anything you need. We want to make it fun and exciting for the kids because we know that's super important. Um, some of them, they, they don't like school that much. So we want to try to find ways to keep them engaged. And so I put together um, a nice team. I, I like to say we're like the Avengers of financial literacy. And so that's why we have Sam Rennick with us today. Um, so our main focus is working with middle and high school students, but then we get opportunities sometimes where we might work with a school that's K through eight. And so I might need a little help there in that department because that's not our bread and butter. And so I'll call on folks like Sam to come in and kind of help support those younger kids. And so Sam, um, how about you go ahead and introduce yourself real quick? Well, I'm uh, Sam X Rennick, creator of uh, Sammy Rabbit and just have a tremendous passion and enthusiasm for uh, youth financial literacy, especially young kids and families. I want to say uh, thank you, Derek. Thank you, Chris, for inviting me to Finance First. <laughs> we, appreciate, we appreciate having you on, Sam. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So um, I'll go ahead and throw the first question out to you, Sam. So I want to know, so I, I brought up this whole thing about uh, being the Avengers of financial literacy. So what's your origin story? What's what my Brian origin you? story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, I'm going to try. You know, I'm half Italian. I'm going to try and give you a short origin story. Okay, <laughs> so just give me a sign. Sometimes I, I get on these side uh, trips and, and roads. I'm going to just try and keep it to the Sammy Rabbit uh, story. This is my first entrepreneurial venture. It came to me roughly when I was like 38 or or, or 40. And so this is really my third career. My third career. I started off in big corporate America, like uh, Fortune 100. And probably from the first day, uh, well, I know it was from the first day I started there, I started pumping money into, uh, you know, they had automated savings and investment plans. I did that for like 12 years. That was my corporate career. Transitioned into uh, financial services, did that for about eight years. For the most part, didn't really enjoy it, but there were certain elements that I did enjoy. One of the things I did enjoy was talking to people and finding out what they were doing with their money. Another thing I enjoyed was uh, I was with a small boutique firm, and they bring in these uh, professional salespeople, very seasoned, every week to train us up. And basically, they wanted us to 
represent and sell their products. And one day this guy showed up with the etch a sketch. You guys are pretty young, so I don't know if you remember etch a sketches or if they're still around. I, mean, I, I know what it, I know what an etch a sketch is. The other thing he brought in was a bubble blower. <laughs> so you know, I you know I I love stuff like that. In mm -hmm. fact, you know it's kind of funny. I think uh, I forget if it was Derek or Chris was mentioning. You know, uh, kids sometimes don't you know like going to school or like learning. I didn't really mind going to school, but what I really learned as an adult is that I like learning. I just didn't often like the way learning was uh, provided to you in structured schools. <laughs> bring in a bubble blower, bring in an edge of sketch. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, what, what I wanted to know, what, what is this guy, what is his angle, what is his pitch? And basically what he was encouraging us to do and I'm proud to say it was something I was already doing, and that was open up college savings accounts mm -hmm. for families and, and kids. And it mainly was a relationship builder. And then you give them an incentive or a little gift, the reward, the bubble, bubble blower, etch a sketch. Anyways, why that is important is because it got me reflecting. Here I am, about 38, 40 years old, and I'm starting to think, you know, what's my real purpose in life? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so he got me to thinking I had now heard all these conversations, probably hundreds, if not thousands of them, people around your guy's age, it, it seems like to me, <laughs> sharing with me their regret and despair for not having started to save and invest earlier. Yeah. So when I started saving and investing at 21, I didn't have any real context like of what everyone else is doing. I just knew this is what I wanted to do. And I had some very specific reasons, like I wanted to get out of my mom and dad's house. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that for me, that was like very motivating. <laughs> we had seven people in a one bathroom house, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, <laughs> need to get out of here and you save and invest for some reason. Uh, oh, I, I had read this about you, Derek, like uh, one of your favorite uh, books is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yes. And I, you know, I, I, I've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. In fact, I've read uh, As a Man Can Think It. I think you, you, you yeah, called that one movie. out. You probably did also, Chris. And then, you know, there was a third one you had mentioned. It escapes me right now. Oh, uh, was it Thinking Grow Rich? rich. It Thinking was Thinking Rich. Yep. And I'm like, look, we, we have that in common. We have several other things in common. But the book I was first introduced to when I was like maybe, I don't know, 11 years old was uh, Richest Man in Babylon. All right. And, you know, I, I took all these exhaustive notes and I'm carrying them around with me. I'm like 11 years old. I'm probably the only 11 year old with like notes on the richest man in battle. Sam, 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 let me stop you really quick. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. That's huge. Like, how did you get your hands at 11 years old? How did you get your hands on the richest man in Babylon? Man in Babylon. All right. It might, okay. So this, this part of like goes to why I, I kind of decided at that moment of reflection this might be my purpose. It seems like from the moment I was born, my dad was like uh, talking to me about smart things to do with money uh, or to, to get money, like working and, and things of that nature. So he said, Sam, you should read The Richest Man in Babylon, even though I'm 11. See, mm -hmm. one of our premises is with Sammy Rabbit basically is kids can. They're capable. Don't talk down to kids, not kindergartners, three-year-olds. But you may have to translate or explain things. It's really a question, how good of a teacher are you? Okay. And then have a have a reasonable expectation. They're not going to be able to give you the articulate all these great answers, say in kindergarten or first or second grade, but you're starting to see them with the language, the ideas, so they become familiar with it. And as both of you know, and especially you, Derek, education is a process. Yep. In terms of money, my thought is it needs to be cradled to grave. So my dad, Chris, he's the one. He he introduced me to all of those. Uh, not rich, uh, riches, uh, rich dad, poor dad, but uh, think and grow rich. All uh, richest man in Babylon. All that kind of uh, stuff. So when you combine that with, I, I like to share with people that I grew up in upper poverty. We're not lower middle class. We were upper poverty. Okay, we <laughs> we I found this out in college. It's the only thing I remember from my intro to economics class, and that's when the professor 
put the number uh, on the board. He said, the poverty line is here. I don't know why he shared that, but he did. And for some reason, I kind of had an inkling of what my parents' combined total income was. And I was like, oh, my God, we're at the poverty line. <laughs> <laughs> Now that this was in, say, right That's yeah, we're right, we're right there, man. We're we're at it, you know. One one mm-hmm. one uh, box of Kellogg's, and we yep. could be, you know, we're we're straddling that line. But you know, back in the '60s and '70s, and this is probably still true, but but maybe not as true. But you know, you're kind of geographically landlocked, so everybody we're we're living in this area that everybody's more or less in the same circumstances. I, I had a place to sleep. We had food to eat, and I had my brothers hand me down clothes. And I got four minutes in in the bathroom a day or something. You know, wow. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got seven people, so you're managing that all the that that type of stuff all the all the time. But the point where I'm really going is is you know we go out and play with our friends. I thought we had everything, mm-hmm. you know. And, and and back then, let me just say there was only three TV stations, so you didn't know how much you didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Now, but but I have to say, you know, uh, I, because of my mother, I went to a, a, a Catholic uh, grade school, right? Okay. And and in that era, everybody wore uniforms, so you don't you know who has a better lunch, okay? Mm-hmm. You judge, you judge <laughs> and, and those little <laughs> things like that matter. I, I remember even growing up, it, it was the tennis shoes. Who had the better shoes? I, 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 okay, you know, you, you've you you got a great story there, Derek, that you shared with us. Uh, please share this. That man, you worked the whole summer. The whole summer, most long on save four hundred dollars and my, and my to buy some kicks. Yeah, had to get my kicks. <laughs> Because that, that was a status symbol, right? That, <laughs> you had to show up with, with, with a nice pair of kicks. It didn't matter what else you had on because we, we wore uniforms. And so you had to have those nice shoes to kind of separate yourself from upper and middle and lower. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, let me just give a, a shout out. Uh, one of the things I really want to compliment you on in your lead in and, and what you're trying to do here with this awareness of like what's available, because to me, that is a key, super key mm-hmm. point because my impression based on many of the narratives I see is people really don't understand what is available right now yes. and how easy it is to access. That's like right. I'm thinking, for example, I, I forget if I had to go to the library or where to find uh, Richest Man in, in Babylon. Now mm-hmm. you can listen to audio books. Yep. You can just click on your phone. You can do all these things. I, I'm thinking you might have had to go to the – library or maybe go to the bookstore or or to a place where they uh, yeah the bookstore where they sell books if i wanted to go say to a bookstore when i was growing up i we 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 sometimes had two cars but usually we had one car okay so if i if i was able to get my parents permission i might have to take two or three buses to go to the bookstore okay Mm -hmm. first first i think it was maybe like a quarter back then Getting the quarter was a big deal. So yeah. I, I'm, I might not have had to work the whole summer, but maybe one or two uh, mowing jobs to get it. Then I'm going to have to have the money to get the get the book. And, and that's going to be like a, a six hour process because that's, you know, a two hour it's bus, two. two hour bus drive. Right. Mm-hmm. Then you got to be it's not like you're going to get the bus right away. You got to be waiting mm-hmm. this, that, whatever. OK, man, if, if you were born whenever it is, let's just say 2000, you have no. You have no appreciation of any. You don't. Under, you don't really don't understand the wealth at every level. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. That we enjoy how it was created and what it's built on, and 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 what you have. Okay. Yeah. You know, and oh. that you can leverage. So yeah. kudos on uh, one. Is, let me just finish this out there. Right. I, I wanted to recommend a book called, of course, we, Sammy Rabbit has books, so I, I want to mention that. But um, there, there's a book called Those Shoes. Those shoes uh, related to the Very kicks nice. idea. Okay, you have nice. that. Yeah. That's a great resource for uh, parents, and it fits into the theme you just shared. You know, this is a status symbol. It's a value, uh, mm-hmm. and you know, it's important to kids. That's huge. That's huge. I, go ahead, Derek. I'm sorry. So that that was actually a great lead into my next question um, because I want to know, Sam, what advice would you give to parents raising kids today? Because it's different than, you know, when you were growing up, it's different from when Chris and I were growing up. So what advice would you give to parents 
that are trying to raise financially healthy kids in today's world? Well, first of all, I would give them applause, okay? Because it's not clear to me that every parent is parenting. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, so if you're like what I hear kids saying now, or kid, now when I'm saying kids, I got uh, like 20 to 35 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> They're kids in your eyes. So okay. just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm at the point in life, everybody's now like a kid. <laughs> but uh, th- th- these people are parenting. They're putting the work in. They're putting the work yeah. in. Okay. And so. Let me just say, as, as from what I can determine, having been here 63 years, probably the most important job there is in life is parenting, okay? <laughs> and so, you know, uh, so you could, it's, and it's a process, just like education, it's a process. So you start, you, you, you determine, I think in reading both of your stories, at some point you determined you want to take charge of your financial independence, your financial freedom, your financial security, your financial wellness, whatever it is. I want to take charge of getting my kicks. And so the way you want to start planting those kind of a seeds and nurture them and, and be consistent about it. So take charge of the conversation. Here's something very few people talk about. I know Dave Ramsey mentions it, but. Uh, it's something that we've we've mentioned as well is that kids are going to learn about money, all right? And they and it's not only are they're going to, they are, and that seems to happen from birth. The big question is, are you going to take charge of that learning and conversation? That's so the if key. they're not learning from you, cool. and let me just say they 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 and I should say learning from you consciously, because parents they're going to be learning. From you unconsciously when when you think about learning and more of the research and studies are reflecting this okay so if, if you look at it just like as biological creatures you start off as a baby you pop out and you have eyes and ears and all you're doing is watching stuff and hearing stuff and you're almost like a little computer you're yeah. starting to code it may not be thinking but what it is is it's feelings associations attitudes these things are all happening and if you go throughout the day, you may not say the word money, or you may say it, but you're like, oh, my goodness, do we have money for gas? Are we going to pay the electric bill? And then you're, you're making these facial reactions, whatever they are, and mm-hmm. kids are coding and learning and taking all this stuff. Cool. And then around age three or four, they don't say, mommy, daddy, give me a savings account for college or for a home. They say, Give me those fiery hot Cheetos. Give me, give me. It's all about, you know, consumer. It's all about consumption and and spending. Hmm. And so apparently, whether it's parents, family members, advertisers, whoever it is, whatever they put in there between maybe even in the womb, because apparently kids hear sounds and feel things in the womb, uh, through age, whatever it is, three or four, they come out with the gimmies, the Iwanas, or whatever mm-hmm. it is, which tells me something there is happening. I want to be a part of that conversation. All Absolutely. right. To me, to me, if you're like a sports player, this is where the game is being decided. That's mm-hmm. where I want to be. I want to be where the game is being decided. Now, that's not to say we need financial education and all learning at every level. It's a it's a layering. Pro, that's how you master things. Yep. Mas, mastery is through repetition, Absolutely. you know, but, but where these feet, what, you know, a lot of the research shows people aren't thinking out these financial decisions. Now that that's mm-hmm. what he, ultimately we, they would be better if we can get them there. Okay. Yeah. It's a heavy lift, right. but people are largely making decisions out of feelings and attitudes and things of that, uh, Sam, Sam, you're you're hitting on such a big point and it's kind of where I affect, right? The reason why I love having these conversations with you and Derek and the people we're going to have on this month is is because we don't always impact the children. I get a chance to impact the parents a lot and Mm -hmm. I have these conversations with them about what your child is seeing. I always say that, you know, children are going to going to do do what we do, not what we say. Right. And so if they see you spending money crazy or right like 
buying the lavish things or doing like that's going to become their habits even when you tell them hey we're broke hey we don't have it hey we can't get that even if you say that they aren't picking that up they're watching what you're doing and so as your spending habits go that's what your children are going to have right and so coming in to affect the parents is huge in this in in this place and I, i i'm gonna let you respond but i want to transition you and say like how did you get to Sammy Rabbit? Because that's something that, again, parents need to understand. These are resources that are out there that even if we're working on the parents' habits, these are things that can be putting the right mindset and the right habits in the children. So how did you get to Sammy Rabbit? What does it that really do for, for, for children? Dive in on that. Great question. All right. Uh, I'm, if I remember, I want to come back to what you just said because I have two th- at least two thoughts on that. Yeah. All right, start, start, <laughs> All right. Start, start there, start there, and then go to Sammy Rabbit right after. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can do that. Okay, so I I mostly agree with what you just said, Chris. Now, to me, what you just shared is what I would call the ideal standard. All right, mm-hmm. this would be like almost perfection if if you could walk the talk. Let's say mm-hmm. the reality in the game is most of us are a mixed bag. So let me say, even if you're not walking the talk and your words don't match your actions, give your kids the right game plan anyways, okay? And I'll use myself as an example. My parents smoked, but Sam, we don't want you smoking. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And now I will say it wasn't perfect. There was four of us. My sister, one of my brothers and myself didn't end up smoking. My other brother did. But what what I loved about my parents is, They man and woman womaned up, okay? So even though they knew their behavior wasn't ideal, they didn't allow that to deter them from guiding us in the right direction. And so what I would encourage parents is don't allow your own behavior to uh, prevent you from guiding your kids in the right direction. And if you make a mistake, what you what you think is a mistake, not what someone else thinks is a mistake, but what you think, then just like when you fall off your bike, try and get back on it. All right. So that 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 that, that that's it. This is like okay. This is how I'm half Italian. This is how we make the sausage. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it looks good out there in the store, but behind the scenes, there's all this this tension, this stress, these these pluses, these minuses, or maybe it's the football game in, in the trenches. This is what's you know, this is yeah. real life. What's happening? I All right. Agree. So I agree. Yeah. And this will lead into that. I agree a thousand percent, Sam. Oh, okay. And that's why. <laughs> and that, right. And that's and 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 that's why them having the proper resources to know how to point their children in the right direction. If they don't, if they're not doing it themselves, they at least yeah. got to know. Well, I have these resources. I'll yes. Give you the yep. right info. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so, uh, okay, so Sammy the rabbit, this now goes back to the first thing. So when I'm thinking about all this, I'm thinking, wow, this might be my purpose and mission in life because, uh, you know, I happened, I figured out, I got this great advice. Not only did I get it, I actually acted on it. (laughs) Okay. A lot of people don't do that. Okay. So, okay. A little side trip. You know, one of what I think is the big, you know, I don't know, lie might be too strong of a word, but, you know, it's like everybody says, oh, I wish somebody would have told me this earlier. Let me just say, I think probably most people were told, like, let's just say this, you should save money. And Mm -hmm. I I relate it to health. Like, everybody knows exercising, walking is good for you, but who's out there doing it? All right. Okay. People that need to do it aren't doing it. So so you, you do need to have the information but then you need to execute on it. And then you need to try and increase your execution because maybe it starts off perfect, but maybe it isn't and you just keep elevating it. So I'm thinking, you know, what can I do? And not only what can I do, this is the question I ask myself. I like to ask everybody, you know, if I could only teach an adult or a child one thing about money, what would it be? All right. And so since I read The Richest Man in Babylon, I thought for myself, what worked for me the best in terms of putting me on the right path was this idea of paying yourself first. Mm. And so I translated that into a message. Saving is a great habit. Yeah. I'm a, we're, we're the habit people. From day one, we've been the habit people. It's in our songs, in our books. 
Get in the habit like Sammy Rabbit, yeah. saving money all the time. Chris, you can do it. So Gotta can you. Right so can you, Derek. Now get to it. Now get to it. Yes, the right mindset and right. all that. So I'm thinking if I'm going to deliver this message for kids, you know, what, you know, what's a good vehicle for it? Ah, and I'm kind of a, what I'll call the, I studied, you know, like, I guess Tom Brady studied under Bill Belichick. I studied under Mary Poppins. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and, and Mary Poppins was like, uh, put a little sugar with your medicine. Mm. So it, it's this idea. People now talk about, uh, edutainment. Can it be, can it be, it's got, but see, let me just say it's, it can't be just entertaining. It's, it's got to be educational, but can it be more engaging? You know, and to me, to me, my view on this whole financial literacy, financial wellness, whatever you call, want to call it, to me, my view of it is it isn't a math problem. It is a communication problem. And so we all speak different languages. And it turns out, you know, maybe 10 percent of the world speaks the math language. The other 90 percent of us, you know, I speak pizza. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like you that. know, share, share with me how I can go from small to large with pepperoni and sausage. I like yeah, that. Okay. Hey, Derek, I get it, man. We get it. Yes. Why do you save for this eight, pizza? I will save. <laughs> yeah, I'll save. And plus, I get an 8% return or 20 or 33% because it's, it's much bigger, you know? And so, uh, you know, th that's the thing. Can we, can we, we're the teachers. Can we bring these subjects to life? Or mm -hmm. the kids, and then get them, you know, I'll use the word hooked or engaged, whatever it is. And this is one of the things uh, we do in, in our work. This came, you know, a little bit later, but uh, we started putting, we've always stressed habit formation, but then we started uh, stressing dreams. What's your dream? You know, my dream, and you can have multiple dreams. One of my dreams was I wanted to get out of that house. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I was willing to work just like Derek was willing to work for those kicks. You know what? Not that I encourage kicks, but let me just say, if that's what motivates you and that's your dream and that's your goal, let's go for it because it's, it's, it's developing this earning in your case. It, what you went out and earned it. Okay. I think there's a tremendous value in earning, yep. you know, so the that's great, true. great example. So that, that's what, that's what, you know, why we created Sammy the rabbit. We started with storybooks, okay? And, you know, I might do it differently now, but largely I'm glad we started with a storybook because I'm a big believer, and this is something I learned from my dad. He, he was self-educated in reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I like the idea of saying I'm helping to build kids' reading and writing skills oh, in addition to their, you know, money skills. That's huge. That's, that's huge. That's huge. I love that. I love that. So, um, Sam, so <laughs> yes. where can our audience learn more about the different things you have going on? Do you have anything special going on just specifically for Financial Literacy Month? So just make sure everyone knows where to find Sammy Rabbit at. All right. Well, believe it or not, our website is SammyRabbit.com. S-A-M-M-Y-R-A-B-B-I-T.com. On LinkedIn, I'm under the name you see on the screen. Sam X Rennick, you know, and as both of you know, and especially you, Derek, uh, you know, I'm tremendously enthusiastic and passionate about this. And I'm happy to talk to anybody who has a real interest in kids and money. This goes back to the second point I want to make about what you shared earlier, Chris. When you're talking about teaching kids, you almost are simultaneously talking about working with parents. OK, yeah. it's yeah. not like, you know, for example, most of the time I spend now is talking to parents or teachers or bankers, it's to adults to try and get access either to the kids or get them to start teaching the, the, the kids. Right. So, uh, you know, that, that they, they go together. So kudos to you. You got to get the, you, you want to get the parents on board and see, this was another thing in our, in our house. And I'm sure it's, it's true in your houses is, is uh, what my mom and dad tried to instill with us was like this family teamwork idea. Now, I will say my dad and I think my mom to a certain extent, she didn't articulate as much, but see, he had this plan or vision. Like if we're going to get, say, from one house to two houses, 
And by the way, these were my grandparents' houses. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but if we were going to get from, say, one to two, we were going to have our best chance if we tried to work together as a family. Yeah. So I remember buying my first car. And, you know, I wasn't like 20 because my, I have to tell you, my dad was a great salesman. <laughs> so, so, you know, when he talked about a car, he goes, oh, yeah, I know. I know you want a car, Sam. But, you know, with the car comes like uh, gas and insurance mm -hmm. and cars break down. So you're going to have to really work a lot of jobs. And, and he kind of he kind of brought to me the the rich one of the rich dad, poor dad questions was like, you know, while you're working, your car is going to be sitting out there in the parking lot. Is your mm -hmm. car working for you or are you working yeah, for your car? Fine. You know, but so anyway, so uh, when when all of us eventually got our cars, basically what we did is we tried to minimize the debt. And we did that by each of us like, OK, I'll put a thousand towards Chris's car. And then we paid each other back on some kind of a schedule. So it was always like this is how you you know, this is how you can go from upper poverty to lower, I guess, I guess lower middle class yeah. or what, whatever the next step is. We yeah. didn't make any big jumps. <laughs> we were like four yards at a time if you go to football. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're grinding it. <laughs> it's the way it has to happen a lot yeah. of times, right? We have to okay. figure that side out, right? We have to go through Well, that, yeah, let me just say that is the most sustainable path, all right? Mm -hmm. So you, we see these stories in all varieties. Very rarely does somebody – Say go all the way to the top and sustain it if they, mm -hmm. if they're if they're not already there because you know it is in some ways like a video game in terms of every level has its own challenges mm -hmm. all right and mm -hmm. you know what part of what happens hopefully is is when when you do get to these bigger levels if you take uh, Bill Gates or uh, Jeff Bezos or whatever uh, you start getting bigger visions and guess what they're mm -hmm. not they're not ten dollar visions they're not even one million dollar visions they're like Okay, let's go to Mars. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's mm -hmm. going to take fifty billion dollars or five trillion. You mm -hmm. know, yep. and th these people are very, uh, you know, in, in in my view, they largely get a bad rap. Some of them probably get the rap that they deserve, but mm -hmm. you don't accidentally become a billionaire. That's right. right. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Point. Yeah. You don't trip and fall into a billion dollars. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of things can happen accidentally. But getting a billion dollars is usually through some focused effort. Now, there might be some element of luck to it, but what's usually associated with it is a lot of focus and hard work. Yeah. That's, right. yep. that's what gets you there. And that's, and that's the message we got to start instilling in this generation, is this even the younger generation, right, of this microwave like it's not going to come overnight mm -hmm. but if we can put the right ingredients in and you can start to execute on it like you said sam and just continue to work you will get to that life that you're looking for that financial level whatever it is you'll be able to get there through the work so you have a much method. better chance okay and that yeah. that's really in my mind that's really what it what it is trying to uh, you know put yourself in a better position uh, so you have a better chance. I mean, look, things can happen out of nowhere. And that's something that's happening. It seems all the time now. It's like, you know, in my mind, when I, I started right at 9-11, you know, mm -hmm. so, okay, I, I didn't know 9-11 was coming. Right. Then we're just starting to get a little traction and the banking crisis hits. Yeah. Right. <laughs> then, then we have COVID. Now we have the, the breakout of the war in Ukraine. So let me just say, you know, that's one of the differences say, between growing up in the 50s and 60s, there were things happening, but not at the pace that is happening yeah. now. And I, I really don't see that. Something. Yeah, I don't see it changing because technology now, This, I mean, we're in the, the most amazing period of human history in terms of, uh, you know, these cell phones and computers, wow. and there's going to be dr driverless cars. And, you know, this is, an, this is another thing. I mean, see, this is something... I don't think most uh, Americans have a strong appreciation for is we're moving. We're, I mean, we're already there, but not at full force. What I'm going to call the global workforce. Mm -hmm. okay? And so, so if you're looking, say like at kids, you know, I, I grew up in, uh, you know, in, in many ways, you know, I, I grew up in the era of uh, what, what is it? Sticks and stones can break your bones, <laughs> but names can't hurt you. All right. right, right. So mm -hmm. you, you, you had to toughen up. All right. And yep. so, 
there's no guarantee. Say, let, let's just say we're an economic, a global economic leader right now, more, 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 more than less. But in uh -huh. ten years, that may they, that may not be true because we're all forming relationships with people all over the world. Yeah. And what I think is going to happen, just like this conversation, we share certain values. That's why we're here together. Exactly. The and the technology exists right now that mm -hmm. we can we can do it. So it doesn't really matter that much if you're, you know, it, it, it may a little bit, but it, I don't think it matters. It certainly doesn't matter as much as it used to. Like whether you're Chinese, whether you're Russian, you're Ukrainian, you're like, oh, you read this book? Why did you read it? What's your story? Oh, my goodness. Your story mm -hmm. is very similar to my story. How do we create a new story to move to the next the next level? Is there a way we can? And, and man, you know, it's I, so. Happen. It's it, it, well, okay, it, it, it's happening, but you got to be you got to be tuned tuned into this so you can outsource work. You know, it's mm -hmm. like sometimes I, I, you know, I know there, there's a lot of kids who are still, uh, you know, developing, let's say, a strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we we don't have to re if it isn't making a hot dog, and I like hot dogs also. <laughs> <laughs> if it isn't a making a hot dog, if it's doing something online like a spreadsheet or whatever. You you could have that done any you could have that done anywhere. Right. Yeah. Like me me I'm like uh, you know why am I chasing around a 15 year old to try and help them cultivate a work ethic if they don't want it when they're say somebody you know you go on I don't know what they call it now but they used to call it uh, overwork or something it's like a it's like a world uh, it's like Fiverr you know the whole world is on <laughs> upwork, there upwork upwork okay upwork. yeah, yeah. I've heard it's that like, oh, well, hey they're they're ready to go to work in five minutes yeah you know? it's like and so it's you have to ask yourself even is this a good use of my time and energy chasing around these kids that think you know oh my goodness I don't have my Starbucks you know or whatever whatever what, what. it's like what <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or or can we be getting this information to the kids that want it, that are looking for it, yeah. and know that they, they need, need it, right? Hey, Chris, now you're really going to get me going because you know one of the things this this I, and maybe you guys have an answer for this. One one of the narratives I I, I see a lot is like, uh, you know, high school kids they want financial literacy, and I'm like, well, why aren't they getting it? All yeah. they got to do is click. Again. <laughs> I really think to answer that question, Sam, and, and this is a good way to wrap up. I know we only wanted to give a little bit and introduce, but that the, the point is maybe they don't know where to click. I've actually said this to a lot of people that when's the last time we taught someone how to use Instagram? When When's the last time we taught them how okay. to use these social platforms that they spend their time on? So we might they might have heard of a platform or a program that they could use, but it's not what's taking their attention. It's the mm -hmm. other things. So maybe we have to teach them how to click to get to it and where to go and teach them that process. And then, yeah, maybe they will want to stay on that platform a bit longer and not in some of the other stuff that's that's out there. So I think that's all of our responsibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, us yes, absolutely. Yeah. OK, and that, that I hope you bring me back for another session on that topic, because I, yeah. I, I I love that thought. Yeah, we, we might have to. We might circle back around there. <laughs> it, 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 that, that's, a, that's a great point, man, because even for me, um, working with my students, I was amazed when I realized um, giving them a Chromebook, I thought they would be able to just go in and just get to work. But then I had to teach them how to use Google Slides, how to search yeah. for the right information on Google, how to create a presentation. They needed help. They needed someone to guide them and teach them and tell them, like you said, where to click on certain things. And so that's why what we do is so important, um, helping the teachers and making sure that they have everything that they need to support their students in the classroom and parents at home also. That's right. Yeah, this awareness, this to me, this awareness element is imp important, and mm -hmm. part of it is exactly what you're sharing right now. That's it. That's it. And so that's why we're doing it. Uh, Sam, thank you so much for jumping yes. on our first uh, finance first um, uh, series for this month, guys that are listening, everybody that's listening on LinkedIn. Derek and I are coming to you every Tuesday and every Friday, uh, every Tuesday and every Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday. Yep, every Tuesday and every Thursday for the month of April. So you're going to get us seven, eight, nine times this month. We're going to bring on somebody special, right? We're going to have this conversation. And who knows if, if good things are happening, we may keep this thing going. Cause just like Sam said, the awareness is needed. 
We want your children to get better financially. We want you to get better financially. We want you to know that there are resources out there that can do it. And you don't have to be searching around for things that aren't working. So that's the goal. That's the mission. Sam, again, we appreciate your time today, man. All right. Well, thanks, uh, both of you. I just want to say one final thing, uh, Chris. In Sammy land, we hop. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Well, we're gonna well, we're gonna hop on out of here, Sam. You guys enjoy enjoy the rest of your day. Listen, you all take Th- care. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. <laughs>